beef stroganoff, but with a little tenderloin of steak. Let's put the kettle on. I have this nice little piece of tenderloin. You can use any kind of steak you want for this pasta at all. Be quite generous with your salt. Get it out half an hour before, hour before. Get it up to room temperature. What we're gonna do, we're gonna cook this first and then we're gonna go on with the rest of the dish. We're gonna use the reverse sear method. Now, you do need one of these though. These little temperature probes that go into the oven. This was like 20 bucks, wasn't much. We're gonna get this up internal temperature of about 105. End of cooking, I want the internal temperature around 115. But because it's a little bit thinner and we're gonna sear it afterwards, I'm only gonna go to 105, let it rest for a little bit and then sear it. That little bit of searing will take it up and finish the cooking. Oven set to quite low, 275 Fahrenheit. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit, let my oven come up to temp and then take it over to the oven. We'll see how we go. Okay, I'm gonna put a pan into the bottom tray of the oven. That's to catch any of the drippings from the steak. Pop this probe in. You want it to do the thickest part of the steak, okay? And I'm just gonna place that on the top tray on top of the pan where I'm putting to catch my drippings and close it up. As you can see here, it's set to 105 and this thing will beep when it gets to 105. We're very close and there it goes. When the steak hits 105, we're going to let it out and rest. While it's resting, we're going to get the pan to a really high heat with a drizzle of oil. You can get everything else ready. Plenty of butter and a couple of cloves of garlic and a few sprigs of fresh thyme. Get the steak into the pan. You should be able to hear this sound. If you don't hear that sound, then your pan isn't hot enough. The probe now reads 101, so it's dropped in temperature as we've let it rest. 30 seconds on one side, give it a flip. We didn't really get the best sear on this steak, but that's okay, because the inside's gonna be perfectly cooked. Get in your butter, your garlic, and your thyme. Once that butter starts to melt, tilt your pan back using a small spoon, baste that steak constantly for the next 30 seconds. Flip and baste again. Only for about 10 seconds this time, as we've already seared this side, we don't want the steak to overcook. Take her out, okay? And then get thyme, garlic, just get them on top. Okay, and then just pour. I didn't really get the sear I wanted, and that's because I'm using a bit of a thin steak, but trust me, when we cut into this, it's gonna be perfectly done in the middle, and that's because I kept an eye on the temperature. As she rests, we'll prep the veg for the pasta. And I'll quickly go over everything we need for this recipe. Super simple, super delicious, it's gonna be rich, it's gonna be creamy, it's gonna be delicious, okay? Pasta noodles, I've gone with egg noodles. Again, a stock, okay? This stock is gonna help thicken the sauce. It's a good quality bone broth that I've made myself. Go out there, use the stock pots. They've got gelatin in if you can. Um, if you can use cubes, that's fine. Your sauce might be a bit thin. You might need to add a bit of flour in the cooking process, but that's up to you. Or you could just keep reducing it down if you want. But again, good quality stock. Stock video still to come. Get in there slowly. Garlic. Okay, a couple of cloves, could crush them. Uh, some horseradish, um, a lot of beef stroganoffs have mustard in, I prefer it with a bit of horseradish to give it its kick. Some mushrooms, just gonna slice these up. Same with an onion, just gonna slice that up. And then some sour cream, just get a little dollop of this at the end, really adds to the richness, creaminess. It's gonna make it luxurious towards the end. Okay, see the pan you did the steak in, keep that. Look inside there. All that, all that's flavor, okay? This is what we're gonna do the rest of the dish in, okay? Onion, slice into half moons, and then we'll just slice these thinly need to. Okay, that's it. We're gonna hop back over to the pan, 
get some more oil in the pan, get these in, start frying them down. Same pan that we did the steak in, remember. We'll do these fry for five minutes. While we do that, get a pot of water on for your noodles, get that up boiling, because everything's gonna come together relatively fast. Using that same pan that we cooked the steak in, drizzle more oil in there and get it back up to a nice heat. I've got my pot of water here that I'm putting on for my noodles, and I'm gonna throw in the onions and the mushrooms. We've got this garlic that we used while cooking the steak. It's still, it's beautifully caramelized, still full of flavor. So we're gonna throw that in. We're gonna add in our stock. And a few pinches of fresh thyme leaves. Once that stock is nice and bubbling, we're gonna reduce it by about half. I'm gonna hit that with about a cup of heavy cream. Bring that up to a boil and drop it down to a simmer. And again, we're gonna reduce that by half. At this point, we wanna get our pasta in. Okay, so the noodles are cooking away. They're gonna take five minutes till they're just underdone. While that's happening, let's do the steak. She's been resting for about 10 minutes. It's still warm. The pasta will heat up more. Don't worry. And if you can see, you can see that the grain's going down. You see where it's cracking. We want to cut against the grain. It's going to give us more tender pieces. And even though we didn't get the sear that we wanted, it should be perfectly done inside. So easy that just falls to pieces. It's the reverse sear method for me, it's a fail safe. You can't get it wrong. You have one of those probes, you can't get that wrong. You'll have perfectly cooked steak every time. I'm gonna pop this to one side, we're gonna head back over to the stuff, do that last little bit, plate it up, get this on top. Un un <laughs> Strain those noodles and get them into the pan. This is when we're gonna hit this with a teaspoon of horseradish and a tablespoon of sour cream. Once those in, give it a good stir and then toss to incorporate everything and we're ready to plate. Okay, we are ready to serve. Put all this together. We have our pasta. Look at her. Okay. Look how clean that pan is. All that sauce has clung to the pasta. It's all sticking in that dish. The steak, I just like to mess it up a little bit. right on top. Wouldn't be finished without some green, just a little sprinkle of fresh thyme on top. Extra little crack of black pepper. And there she is. The tenderloin beef stroganoff. Fantastic. So easy to do, you'll impress anybody with that, especially if you cook the steak with the reverse sear method. Okay, let's taste it. Seriously, there's no other way you should be cooking this steak now. Look at it. Look how perfect that is. Giant noodles clinging onto that. Creamy and slightly with a little kick from the horseradish. That's special.